G'day mates, hopefully this will actually go live. I've uh, had to reset all of my equipment, so I've set everything up again, and hopefully it actually, actually works. And of course, now my phone alarm's going off, which remind me to do this. That's okay. I can see it's going live to air at least. That's a good thing. All right, so here we go on a, another nice Sunday morning in Franganistan, otherwise known as Frankston. Uh, good morning, Michael. How are you? Hopefully the uh, volume levels are okay today. I had to do a little bit of guessing in my settings, so I did some trial recordings, but hopefully it works. But anyway, let's uh, welcome to some new subscribers this week. We have Shane, Curtis, Merlin Flyer, and I think I said hi to Wolfgang and Sean Mark last week, but just in case I didn't, greetings and welcome along. Hopefully some people are watching today, that would be cool. Anyway, what we're going to be doing today is the Clinchfield Limited Power Scenario. This one is hairy as... Now I'll just get into it and I will uh, start setting up the logo while I chat because there's a little bit to do. We're going to be driving a F7 locomotive. I have to say I like these things. I have had a drive of the Australian equivalent, which is an S-Class and the A-Class. Now, how are the game levels versus my sound? Hopefully okay. I'll start setting up the loco until I see some response in the chat. I'm getting a little bit ahead of what the game wants me to do, but that's okay. It'll figure it out. Honest. Now, I'm really hoping, really, really, really hoping that uh, my system isn't going to blow up today. We can hope. Uh, here comes our adversary that we're waiting for. But anyway, what I've just set up in this locomotive, I turned on the gauge lights. I set the locomotive selector to two for the dynamic brakes because we have, count them, two locomotives. Now, the reason this is really difficult is because this train should have at least three. Uh, I want to set our brake for freight. We now have some brakes, so let's just push that into first service so we stay where we are. We can release the locomotive brake. It's in forward. Now we need to set this to one, which is just normal drive, series parallel. Uh, make sure the brake's cut in. It is. All good. Okay, let's get some windows open. Mouse is going everywhere today. He's our conductor of the day. Every other time I've played, I've had a girl, but today I've got this guy. Hi there, whoever you are. Okay, we're almost ready to get moving now. So the train's running. Now, I've had a couple of trial plays of this scenario and through uh, inadvertent force closes of my computer with the dreaded blue screen of death, of which I actually had several that I've had to resolve. Yay. Oh, you can hear me, but not the game, Michael. That's no good. Let me just uh, scroll that down. That's because I've got the game speakers turned off. Okay. All right, then. Good. Hopefully we have games out now. That's a good start, but that's a, that's just fun. I think I turned the levels on in the wrong section, and I've now turned them on in the right section. So hopefully you can hear this, and I'll know in about 20 seconds, because Michael will go, yes or no. But anyway, let's get started. So we're allowed to move now. So the first thing I need to do is build up some power, because we are on a slight gradient very slight. I will have the HUD on today. I try and stream without it normally. So what we're looking at while power builds up is the ammeter here. You can just see this ridiculously tiny needle. And we now have plenty of amps so we can release the brakes and we will start to move. Eventually. Uh, let's give it some more juice. Thanks, Michael. Glad you can hear the game now. Also glad to see I've mostly resolved the hitching problem in the graphics. Mostly. That logo's doing it a little bit. Uh, 
you know, the dramas I had, I had a uh, Razer driver and Razer Synapse that were causing issues with Transim World 2. That was causing BSODs. I had a driver for a SATA card. This evil little SATA card, in fact. Which, um, while it's a relatively new card, its drivers are from about 2012, which is interesting. That was causing problems with Windows in the latest update, so the H2 update has all sorts of problems with really old drivers. Really doesn't like them. And then just after I resolved all of that, believe it or not, with the help of Microsoft, their, their support's actually quite good, I have to say. I was floored, to be honest. Very surprised. But anyway, that's okay. Thank you for Microsoft for that. Uh, the next thing that came up was a Windows update, which uh, for those of you who play, I think I wrote it down somewhere, there it is, it's 513.30. When that installs on your computer, if you play games, it will probably be so do. Because games like using the GPU a lot. Oh, we might want to put a bright headlight on. It's interesting that when you're using the controls down here, this is bright headlight on, but it doesn't actually do it. You have to use the controls either on the keyboard or the rail driver. Life's like that. So, why is this scenario difficult? We don't have enough locomotives, and we're going to do a lot of shunting of coal cars, and it's on a massively hideous gradient. Now, I'm actually going to speed up a bit here, and I am going to speed deliberately, because I want to get up to the mine and it won't hurt us. I also want to speed up before we get into the high gradient because we'll never speed up again after that as it goes up to 3.5%. Yeah, so you've had support from them as well, Michael. That's excellent. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's Microsoft people or it's a little bit like the Google model where it's um, product experts that give you the support or like me over in local guides i'm one of the people that gives support over there but uh, whether it's formal or not it was really good and thank you very much to the person named summit who was very very helpful you can see the locomotives transitioning there you'll notice you heard the change in sound and the amps dropped off they'll come back up again it was transitioning from series to series parallel here they come back up So the F7 is a semi-automated locomotive, meaning it does things like that by itself. You don't have to manage the series parallel transition, but you have to manage a whole lot of other stuff by yourself. Stuff that you would normally take for granted. So if I just introduce you around the cab while we're driving, and yes, we're passing a yellow signal. We have the automatic brake, which is braking the entire train. So this handle has, sorry for the scroll there, this handle has several positions from first service which gives you a very minimal brake application and yes I know I'm speeding I'm doing that deliberately because I want to get up the hill we've got over here a sanding lever which sand head or sand rear we have a window winder that's inoperative but does move when the window does it's kind of cool that thing doesn't do anything brake stand has a brake cutout and no it's not that control there's another there's another active control down there somewhere but it doesn't seem to do anything a safety pedal which i haven't turned on the safety systems for this a heater for winter time the number of locomotives you've got this sets the voltage for the dynamic brake so it just helps you to run the dynamic brakes properly the dynamic brakes in this locomotive are particularly poor shall we say i don't think i'd quite say as far as shit, but poor this rotor valve controls the brakes, so it controls how fast or how slow they apply. So we've got them in freight, which is appropriate for the cars we've got, which is a little bit slower than how it applies in passenger. I have experimented with both. I've just got to watch our speed, because if we get over 40, we won't get around the corners. We have the standard throttle, run one through to run eight. Reverser with forward and reverse. Now this one, is your transition lever it controls whether you're driving with one or two or whether you're braking when it's in b and there's a whole bunch of other controls down there and that's about it for this loco apart from the front horn and the rear horn of course 
And it's going to back the power off a little bit because we won't get round corners if we go this quick. And at the moment, at least, we are going downhill. Now, I've got the HUD on deliberately today. Probably don't need it so much on the drive to the mine. But coming down from the mine, it's going to be quite necessary to manage the brakes. Unfortunately, I'd much rather not have it. I've tried doing it without. But, hmm, let's just say it didn't go very well. And there's a few things during the shunting that uh, quite likely don't go very well. Michael, I think there actually are safety systems for this sloker. So Michael's just mentioned in the chat that there aren't any, but they're not implemented in this game. I know the Australian equivalent of the F7, the S-Class and the old B-Class that became the A-Class when they were rebuilt, they do have driver vigilance at the very least. Good morning, Travis. Welcome along to the regulars and whoever the other people are. We have five at the moment, which is cool. So we're just cruising along up towards the Blue Diamond Mine. And for the people who have just joined, yes, I'm speeding deliberately. Because this grade's going to get pretty bad. And with only two locomotives on, so if I show you the outside. We only have two. Normally we'd have three. But I do have to be a little bit careful of the speed because there's a lot of switches and corners or points or whatever you like to call them today that we just won't get through if I go much over 40. This scenario is quite long. It will take a couple of hours. So we're getting into a much heavier gradient now. So I'm going to head back up to notch 8. And we're going to lose all of this speed that we've got quite, quite soon. And if I didn't do this, we simply wouldn't get up the hill. I've tried. I've tried doing it the right way. You can't. <laughs> This is the hobo's view. If you look at other channels on U YouTube, Google a guy called Hobo Shoestrig. He's um, quite fascinating. I'll the caboose for a little while. They're quite nicely modelled, these. You unfortunately can't get up on top of them. So they've done quite a nice job with this. The textures on this look quite three-dimensional. Even though if you pull the texture maps out of the game, they're very, very flat, but they look nice. That incidentally is why you can't stand on the roof. It's just graphics. There's nothing up there. Good morning, Roy. When are you going to start streaming your flight simulator, Roy? Happy to show you how, if you'd like not very hard. All you have to do is talk, and I know you're good at that. I think the locomotive just transitioned back to series then. Give it some more grunt to get up the hill, which is also why we're rapidly slowing down, because series isn't as fast. It also kind of looks like only one of them's powering. That's interesting. Hmm. If the exhaust is anything to go by. I hadn't noticed that before, but maybe that's true. You reckon those pine trees would hurt on the little drone camera here? That one would have. <laughs> Oh, one day, Roy, that's such a cop-out.
of all the people who are viewing that I know today, Roy probably lives the closest to me, so I can go and harass him in person and make him stream. Maybe we'll even do a joint stream one day, Roy. That'd be fun. Go back in the cab for a while. So we're certainly pumping out the juice. Loco's working quite hard. Not as hard as it can, which is interesting because it's in notch 8. I would have thought it was pulling pretty hard right now on this gradient. If you watched the tutorial, or sort of a tutorial, from Matt Peddleston yesterday about dovetail braking, most of it for me was old news because I do know how trains work. But uh, the last couple of minutes where he shows how the Simeograph engine actually works with the braking, that was quite interesting from a game point of view, the way they've modelled the braking on longer trains. So they essentially have three braking gradients, and that's a little bit of a representation of reality, because in reality you have a different braking gradient on every single car in your train. So they all brake it and release the brakes at different times, because they're controlled by air going through a brake pipe. But seeing how the game did it was quite illuminating, and actually helps with the, the gameplay. Ooh. I think I need some need to fix my draw settings. They're a bit too close to the train. You can see where it's drawing the fence there, just up here. I have to change. Still changing settings in the Unreal Engine.ini file. Bit late for that road crossing. So we're almost up at the mine now. Two miles to go. This bit of the scenario, you don't get to do very much. You notice I'm not really interacting with the controls at all. But uh, we just crawl our way up the hill. And we will get there in due course. Now one interesting thing I did notice, it's not doing it at this spot, so I'm going to jump in and out of the loco and go to the 8 view a few times. I know, and this, Michael's just asked a question, did I check if the other loco is cut out? Um, you actually don't need to, because you can tell. If you apply the brakes and they apply, then it's not. <laughs> it's not cut in. If they don't apply, or they stay applied when you release them, then the other loco is probably cut in. And in this particular scenario, Dovetail have got the locomotive set up correctly. But if you're playing this game and you're playing the introductory scenario is definitely wrong in this game, where the other locomotive does have its brake stand cut in. And what we're talking about is this little switch down here where you can switch the brakes on and off. I'm not going to do it because it's a scenario breaker. Fairly soon we're going to see the other locomotive that will come and help us for a little bit. It pinches some of our carriages anyway. Hey, look at that. They're both smoking now. So they are both running. That's good. Now, I have noticed that places along this route, when you hop out of the loco and go to the 8 view, that is a fairly nice view. When you hop out of the locomotive and go to the 8 view, sometimes you end up outside the world. So we'll do that a few times to see if we can get it to happen. It looks like no so far. I've knocked the stream back down to 1080p, so 1920 by 1082, because uh, while in theory my internet link is fast enough to run 2K, discovered that if other people in the house namely my munchkins, who are both adults, start streaming or watching videos, they eat enough bandwidth that it makes the 2K drop out. So we'll stick with 1080 because I know that'll work.
The carriage sounds aren't too bad, but I'd love to hear creaking bolsters. The bolsters are the part where the bogey pivots, so the carriage sits on top and there's a bowl and the bogey sits in the bowl and it moves around and you can hear them creaking because they've got rubber blocks. Let's jump out again here and see if it happens. No, not today. Very difficult to make this part of the scenario the slightest bit entertaining. No, it's not jerky this week. I actually found out the uh, cause of the jerkiness and I have to say, I did a dumb. When I built this computer during the COVID shutdowns, there was a very limited selection of motherboards. So while I got one that supports 10 series chips, because I wanted the latest chipset, it's a relatively old board. And it has two PCIe slots. One is times two, and one is times four. The card needs times four. Guess which slot I had it in. So the card couldn't actually get all of its data through. That was a bit of a dope moment. Oh, now we're generating more amps. And we're in the red. We've gone up to a 3.4 gradient now. I think with Clinchfield, Dovetail did something with the wheels too, because to me it looks a little bit more like they're closer to rotating now. You can actually see the headlights on the ground too, I've never noticed that before. Better start actually paying attention because we're getting close. Ah, there's our friend. So, this locomotive here, ah, gender diverse, two female crew. This locomotive here will be coming to pick up the back half of our train after we shunt it aside shortly. You'll see them soon. One of the gotchas that you have to be careful with is opening up couplers. Because if you don't open up your couplers properly, that locomotive comes and bumps onto the back of the train, but it can't couple up, so it just sits there because it's a bit of a dumb AI, and it just sits there trying and trying and trying. And then your scenario is kind of dead because you need that siding where those carriages are sitting, and you need it to remove them. And once they've pushed up against the train, it's too late to go down there and open it because it won't let you. Looks like the stream's fairly healthy. It's sad that we couldn't shunt at that mine because its sightings look like they're flat. <laughs>
this part of the simulation is fairly realistic with 700 odd yards or near enough to meters to go you'd be tempted to start powering down but that would be a mistake <laughs> you don't want to do that just yet and it was a, an interesting uh, thing I learnt the first time I was given a drive of one of the diesels at Puffing Billy coming up the hill and cresting the top of the bank coming into Emerald Station I started to power down as we came into the station approach and the driver who was with me who was giving me a go I says no keep the power on the back of the train's still coming up the hill which was an excellent reminder so even though the locomotive here is now on a 2.5 percent gradient the back of the train this bit is still on that 3.5 let's just turn on our stop marker I prefer to play without the stop markers, but this one's actually quite hard without them. So at this point you hope all the points are set correctly to get to that stop marker. I can't remember to be honest. We'll just hope. It's interesting that they bring you through this set of curves at the top end of a gradient because I can't imagine in reality that that would ever actually happen. It'd be too hard to work. Be a good way to derail a train. So now we're going to start throttling down. Throttling back up, or we're not going to make it to the stop marker. And hopefully, these brakes apply quickly enough. That should be enough to hold it. So, we need to start splitting up the train according to our destructions. So I'll just wait for it to decide that I've read that. Okay. Now, this is why you need to stop in the right place, but let's do this properly. So in US local operations, they have the three rules of safety. I to hear brake squeal. It's as though we're moving just a tiny bit, but I don't think so. Doesn't look like we are. But anyway, you have your, have your train brake applied, loco brake is fully applied, throttle in idle, and the reverser in neutral. And normally, it would be this guy who jumps out now and goes and uncouples things, but you notice he's just looking away from me because he's having a bad day. And I have learnt only uncouple from this side. So down we go. It's interesting how you get your achievements all over again, even though Steam remembers them all. It actually does kind of sound like it's still moving slightly. Oh well, hopefully not. Hopefully it's just bouncing around on the coupler springs. Alright, this is the one we want. And we can't unlock the one on the other side, but we will do that later. So we go back to the loco now. Yes, he is too lazy to go and do his job. I think in reality in this particular one, particularly in an employment time, this is set in the 80s, there would have been more people working on this railway than just two in the loco. They probably would have had a third person. 
and the mine probably has people too. So now we have to pull those cars all the way up to the end. Go back into the locomotive. And I'm just going to check the map and make sure the points are set correctly, because often they're not. And for this scenario, they are, so that's fine. We have to go all the way up to that stop marker up there, and it's almost touching the buffers, and if you don't do it, you won't get back down again. That's okay. All right, so back into forward. And before we release any brakes, we want to build up some power. So we're going to wait till we get some amps. And I'm actually going to go into the third notch, which you would not normally do. And I'm going to release the locomotive brakes. So and you'll feel it starting to pull ahead before I release the train brake. Now, interestingly, bit of wheel slip, notch four will do the job. Interestingly, at this point, because we didn't set any handbrakes, the back of that train would just roll away. Now, did we separate? Looks like it. Yep. So in a re real situation on a 2.5% gradient, you'd set a handbrake on probably every car. Or they would just roll away when the air bleeds off. You would also dump the air out of the brake pipe, but you can't do that in this one. Yeah. Michael says there usually are three people. Yeah, all, all the videos I've seen of Clinchfield in the 70s and 80s, they had three people. Interestingly, this locomotive is modelled without the third chair, because normally it has got another one. The SD40 has three chairs, though, in, in Clinchfield. And it feels very strange to be powering up towards a buffer stop, but we just do what we're told. And you notice the gradients become steeper again, so we're up to 3.3 now. When you're loading coal in this scenario, which you'll see in a moment, the combination of the changes in gradient and the changes in weight is a bit of a painful experience. Now we're approaching our point. to try and cope with the gradient. Okay, so you'll notice I applied the brakes before I throttled back then. And I applied the brakes quite a lot, probably more than I needed to. I probably only needed about 30 pounds. Because now we're going to go back down the hill, but we're going to go into a different siding. So it wants us to come into this second siding here. So we'll set the points for that. Now these other ones should safely be all the same. But before we do that, a lesson I've learnt the hard way is we're going to jump out and we're going to do the thing that we couldn't do before because they were too close to each other. We're going to go and open this coupler up on this carriage because if we don't, that other locomotive's going to come up and it won't be able to couple to it. And I'll do it now rather than when we push it back. Go around this stuff because you can't go over them. Because the uh, cut lever for the this one is on this side. And back we go. But I'm going to go back to cheat's way. Control zero. Okay, so we know our points are set. We know we're all good. We're going to go into reverse, but we're not going to apply any power. We're only going into reverse so as not to disrupt things too much. And then I'm going to release the brakes. And we're going to start to roll. 
and straight away the brakes start releasing in the train we start picking up speed I'm actually going to apply a bit of locomotive brake and that will apply in both of the front locomotives just to help control our speed a little you can do it with the train brake but the train brake is quite slow to relax slow to operate and the loco brakes are not I don't know if this is prototypical but it works and it stops a runaway And you'll notice I'm running quite slowly. That's deliberate. It makes it easier to maintain control of the train. Just out of interest, the people who complain about the landscaping in Arosa but praise Clinchfield, look at those dead straight lines as though it's been ploughed. Doesn't look much like a forest to me. That's okay. Yeah, we're slowing down even more. Let's go back in there and we'll just give it a little bit less loco break. Loco brake is a self-flapping brake, which means I can increase it and decrease it at will. As the train brake, you have to be a little bit more finicky. I want to keep it at about two and a half miles an hour. Not let not let it get too much over that. get rid of the HUD for now because we don't really need it in here because we know the gradients are evil which means I now have to watch this speedo or I can cheat and watch this one on the rail driver Oop, I've managed to move the rail driver slightly Speed's starting to creep up again. And we're heading down there quite nicely. We're about to reach where the rest of the train is by the look of it. Yep. Now it's pretty finicky about where you stop in this scenario. Picking up rather a lot of speed. Well, there's something different. Someone just rode a horse through my front yard. Hmm. Let's have a look at how we're going on the map. Yeah, not bad. 
so it'll want to stop roughly at the point where the loco is full level with the rest of the train. The other difference here is you're reliant on your own devices as a driver here, but normally there'd be someone on the ground giving you hand signals about where they want you to stop. So we should be getting relatively close. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six car lengths to go. You can't really rely on the 330 something yards to go up there because that's your position from the end point. Not where you're actually stopping, that's where the end of the cars have to be. So we're getting there, very slowly. Should see the rest of our cars shortly going over those points now for the diverging siding. Right, so I think we want to stop about there, so we'll go full service on this brake. Now, how did we go? Do I need to move it? Well, look at that. Look at that. Spot on. Lucky. All right. So lap that. We're fully applied on the loco brake. We're in idle. And the reason you always, that was interesting interaction between the handles there. A little bit of voltage drop in the rail driver probably. We're going to open this one, but we have a luxury here. We're going to open the locomotive as well. Back to the loco, because we're going to come up here and we're going to hook on to these ones. Now, this is the lever I opened before, but just come and check them. That knuckle is open. So when they're closed, they're flat. Is the one on the front of the loco closed? Yeah, it is. So that's a closed knuckle. So if I go and yank its cut lever, Well, it should look different. Yeah. The cut lever's not doing it. That's probably the scenario preventing that rather than reality. Scenario going, you shouldn't be touching that one. Why are you? All right, so we've uncoupled from those. So if I just release the brakes now, we'll crash back into those cars and recouple to them. We don't want to do that. So, forwards. And crank up some amps. We don't need as much this time because it's only the two locos, so Notch 2 should do it. Now release the train brake and release the locomotive brakes, and hopefully we will go forwards. There we go. And hopefully we'll leave those hoppers behind. We have. Now, we need to change the points while we're coming up here because it wants us to go into a different hiding. So you'll notice it flicks back and forth between these three tracks. So you've got to keep an eye on that as you play this scenario or you'll end up in the wrong place. And that's why I turn on the stop marker even though I normally play without it. Because it helps you realise that you're about to do something silly. Just get us up there a bit quicker. This scenario takes us long enough as it is.
All right. Go back to the map. Now, you could walk and change the points all the time, but I find it simpler to do it with the map. We're going to come down and couple up to our cars that are down here. We still have our caboose on the end. And what we're going to do now is actually split this in half so that we can load it. Because there's not, not enough room to pull it all forwards to load it. So, into reverse. Even though we're not going to be powering at all, we're just going to release the brakes and roll back down there. I'll let it get to 5 mile an hour because it's just the locos and then I'll start controlling the speed with the locomotive brake and we'll keep it at about 5 until we're a bit closer and then I'll drop it down general rule of thumb for locomotives coupling up to a train anything up to about 4 mile an hour is safe when you hit any more than that, you're likely to hurt things, whether you break knuckles or you cause a derailment. Now, if you're putting parts of a train together, which we'll be doing shortly, you want to be doing a lot less than that because the forces involved are so much bigger than just two locomotives. So we should be about to couple up. Almost there, I think. We're coming through the points now. There we go. Now, straight away, we want to apply the train brake. That seems to be pretty well holding there. So, back into our neutral position and off we go to uncouple some of our train. Now, the first time I did it, I kept climbing down the other side and uncoupling things and that caused me no end of dramas. It's this one. All right. Now we're not going to walk back there because we're lazy. And equally lazy, we're going to set the points this way on the map again. So we're now coming up into the coal loader. And the other thing I want to check, yep, that one's set. And that one is too. So I'm a pretty firm believer, even though we're not going to use all that track, make sure you've got somewhere to go and you're not going to run through any points. Because that's how you do it in real life. Go up to notch three, build some amps. Release the loco brake, but not the train brake. And now we can start releasing the train brake because we started pulling. You saw it jerk. And at this point, if this was reality, that would roll away. Bye-bye. But it doesn't. You may have noticed our other carriages are gone, though. That's because they got stolen. Now, I need to bring our speed down because we're going to be loading coal. So I need to keep it at th less than three miles an hour, which is a bit of a pain in the rear. So two's not going to do it. So I'll be juggling back and forth between three and two constantly. Now I'll just hop outside the train and we can watch. We just is a good spot and I will use the rail driver for judging my speed now because we've got stop markers turned on we now get loading markers and that tells you how well you're doing at filling them up Oop, 
One. One's no good. One bad. Now, because I set those tracks, I don't have to worry about where the train's going, because I know it's long enough to do this. I don't only have to worry about my speed, which is bad enough as it is. Oops. The adjustments on the rail driver really aren't very fine. As your weight increases and that gradient increases, we might be just able to leave it in notch three now. We might be okay. Yeah, it's feeling okay. It's just sitting on a steady two. Oh, it's losing a bit of speed now. Let's see how we go. having to go up a notch into four. Now, did that fill? That's an interesting question. Let's get some brakes on. I want lots of brakes on before I take the power off, because this is heavy now. All right, power's off, and we can lap that brake. So if you're wondering what I'm looking at, we're looking at the different needles we've got here. So our white needle is the brake pipe, which is currently at 70 pounds, so it would have been at about 90 before. We've got 50 pounds applied on the brake cylinder. Now, this is only telling about the locomotive cylinder, but it'll be similar throughout the train, gradually increasing as the brake pressure goes backwards. The white one is our equalizing reservoir, which is the reservoir we use to control the brake pipe on the train. And the red one is our main reservoir. So that's how much pressure we've got to pump back into the train when we release the brakes. Now, I'm just gonna jump out. So I'm gonna set the locomotive brake and go back into neutral because I want to go and set some couplers. And while we're down there, we'll set some points because we have to go down there anyway. Because remember when we pulled these carriages off, we undid the other one. So in the near future, this is going to be the front of our train. Because we're going to put this back down in the siding. So you can see it's knuckles closed. So if we tried to come and couple up to that later, it would not work. So I'm going to hit the lever. And you can see the knuckles now open. So it's quite different. Big chunky pieces of material. Now while we're down here, let's just wander down and set some sidings the right way. So we know these first points are going to be set okay because we just came through them and they were fine. It's this second set that we're going to want to change. And we can see here that they are set for the siding we came out of, so we want to go the other way. Hopefully, there we go. It's a cool animation. They're now set for that road. So if you're ever working on a real railway, when you change your points and you want to figure out where you're going, you basically just stand there and have a look. And you follow with your eyes. So we're over here. You follow with your eyes that we're going to go through those points and then we're going to go down there, which is where we want to go. Okay, 
back to our locomotive using lazy method. If you play the game and you haven't encountered lazy method, it's control zero. Welcome back, Michael. Okay, now this train is loaded, so it takes a little bit more to get it down the hill safely. So interestingly, we're going to use dynamics as well as the normal brakes. Now the dynamics are really slow. So I'm releasing the loco brakes and I'm going to bail them off just to make sure they don't apply from the train brake. And then I'm going to start throttling up, which seems like a strange thing to do when you're about to go downhill. But we're now in dynamic brakes. And I probably want about that much of them. No, not that much. And releasing the train brake now. We've already started rolling. And now I'm going to start applying the train brake again. And it's going to take a little while to apply because we only just released it. Come on. Slow me down. And we'll give it all the dynamics and bail off the loco again. And hopefully we actually come to a stop. It's not feeling good. There we go, the brakes are finally going up again. We're going way too fast. Will the brakes apply? This is the question. They feel like they are. And we are slowing down now. And because we're coming to a stop, I'll kill the dynamics in a moment. Okay, now did we end up in near enough to the right place? Hmm, we probably could have come back a little bit further. But the scenario does want me to uncouple now. But this having this space here will actually give me an advantage too, because when we come down later with these cars and hook them on and it crashes into this train, it will move it a little bit. So that gives me a little bit of room to move before we fail this junction down here. So similarly, we're going to make sure that our points are set so that if we do run through them, we don't damage any equipment. Okay. Neutral. Fully applied on the loco brake. The reason you do those brake applications, by the way, it's, it's safety rules. When someone's going to go in, you want no possibility of movement. So you set the locomotive up so that if you knocked a handle, it wouldn't move. Okay, we have released those, and we're going to release the locomotive ones as well. Now we want to go back into our loco, back into the chair, straight over the top of the chair, of course. Now, you'll notice our stop marker, guess what? Different track, yay. Alright, same as before, forward, build up some amps. Oops. Almost did it dumb. We're in dynamics, so we'll just wait a moment, let the system reset from dynamics, and build up some amps. Now, interestingly, when we came onto the dynamics there, it almost felt like we were powering, but we weren't. Just the dynamics taking a long time to come up, and they're quite crap. And releasing both brakes. And we should go forwards now. There we go. And we should have left that behind. And we have. And what's going to happen next is we're going to come down here and pick up those cars. But not our caboose. We do that last. You'll see later on in this scenario when we have to change ends. I kind of think Dovetail might have it the wrong way round. And I'm going to try it a different way to what the scenario wants this time, which might go well or it might go really badly.
Oh, sorry, conductor, mate. Did I plant your useless face on the windscreen? Awfully sorry. Not. Okay, we're going to come back down to those cars. We want to set our points there because we're coming down to pick these up now. So we're going to come from the truck we're on and we're all good. We can start rolling back into reverse. Now, the reason I go into reverse even though we're just going to roll backwards and I could leave it in forwards in the game in reality on a real train you definitely would not do that because you would do awful things to your traction motors if you applied any power and that would be so easy to do would probably be easier to knock your brake handles with your knee as you were getting out of the chair a little bit less brake we've got a fair way to go here now I've done plenty of real railway shunting and I prefer a driver that drives this way that drives at a constant slow speed towards the cars because it makes it much easier to judge and when you're calling out distances to your driver whether that's through hand signals or on the radio it's much easier to keep everybody happy and keep everyone in sync the drivers that race towards the cars always give me the shits Nearly there. Close knuckle. And you may remember we opened this one before. So they will couple up. Even though the loco is closed, it'll still work. Nice and gentle. And you notice that we're controlling that train again. Notice it started to roll then. So I've already put some air into that one. Okay. Now we need to get out again. So full application there. Back into neutral. And we're going to go and release our caboose. Michael, you're from the North American region. Do you know the origin of the word caboose? It is a strange word. I googled it, but I found lots of conflicting information. Where is my coupler? There we go. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is take advantage of these steps. And I'm going to go over this side. And I'm going to open this one. You'll see why when we go to couple up. Now, they're going to do something the game doesn't want me to do, but, you know, it just feels wrong that I don't.
I haven't even found if there is a brake on these carriages. Oh, there is. Can you apply it, though? No. So it's not an active thing. It's such a strange practice having to brake up high like that. It would encourage, in my mind, very poor shunting practices. Where well, you'd be very likely to fall off. Okay, back in the chair, and judging by the stop marker, it wants us back in this first row, so we'll be changing the points again. And just because it's dovetail, we'll be checking the other points. And it has, it has changed that one, because we were going in here before. Crazy game, people. Okay, forwards, bit of honking. And I'm going to go right up to notch three, which hopefully will be enough to make these empty cars move. Release the locomotive brake, because our amps are coming up. And then the train brake. We haven't rolled back, and we are moving. So, yes, we did leave the caboose behind. Yeah, thanks, Michael. I'll, I'll keep checking it out there must be some meaning for it so I've got my speed at um, a bit over 5 mile an hour at the moment and it's starting to drop. We need to be three miles or less for loading. In Australia, we call the Goose a guards van for the few trains that still have one. They're mostly only used on heritage trains. So now we're back to that juggling thing again of trying to keep our speed current. I'll stay in the locomotive this time so you can watch the speedo. Oops, a little too little. So this is what I'm watching. I look down a bit, you should be able to see the throttle handle and the speedo. Here we go. You'll see what notch I'm in. It's one of those interesting terminology things, as Michael just explained, that the conductor would have sat in the caboose, and now the conductor sits in the locomotive. So interestingly, we've got a conductor in this locomotive, but we also have a caboose. Go figure. So in Australia, we call the guy sitting in the conductor's seat the second person, and the guy who would have been sitting in the caboose would be called the guard, and this is, that's the same in the UK. So we're now sitting on a relatively steady two miles an hour. We're very slowly increasing. I'll probably let that sit for a little while. I'm just watching the load coal marker up in the left there because when that disappears we know we've finished as long as we stay below the three mile an hour we're starting to lose some speed so I'll have to notch up again
You may think it's funny that I'm not looking at, out the window, but in reality, a driver wouldn't. Let's get some brakes on before we roll backwards. That should be enough. Okay, so we're going to go and couple up to those other cars now. So let's go set some points. Now, the dynamic experiment last time didn't work. So we're going to do it without dynamics this time. I'm going to have lots of loco brake on to start with. Into reverse. And I'm going to release the train brake. And you can hear the compressor running now. I'm surprised the loco brake's holding it, to be honest. See as the train releases whether that continues to be the case. Yeah, looks like it's going to. It's a short train, it should have pumped up by now. Now this I can guarantee you is not prototypical. You just wouldn't do it, not with a loaded train. And it is, it's, it's still slowly creeping up in speed. That last one doesn't look full, does it? Hmm. Hopefully it is, or it's not going to let me out of here. Let's go into first service now. First service is also called minimum reduction in a lot of trains. So they have a, a setting on the brake valve where it'll take out seven to 10 pounds of air. So first service is slowing us down quite a lot. So I'm gonna let it come almost to a stand and then I'm gonna release that first service. That'll do, I'll release that. It should start crawling again. Might have to release a bit of loco brake too. Should have released the first service just a little bit earlier. So when you play this scenario, if you play this game, it's really important to keep this load under control because it's heavy and when you hit the other one and you have no air brakes on the other one for a little while until they pump up you um, just go flying off down the hill it's quite entertaining really been there is the way this game works and the uh, program manager Matt Peddleston cleared it up in I think it was it was a Thursday stream I think when he it wasn't his braking tutorial, it was, the, I think, one of the main streams. I asked a question about why we don't use handbrakes, and he said, in this game, the physics stop working as soon as you uncouple the carriages. They just sit there. But the challenge with that is, they're sitting there with no brakes. And as soon as you couple up to them, the physics starts working again, and they've got no brakes. So as soon as I see that car come in to the picture, all right, so I'll go into first service again. But I'm going to, yeah, I think we'll be okay. And now I'm going to go into full service because as soon as we couple up, it'll start pumping up the rest of that train. Okay, that went okay. I'm happy. So now we've got full application, pop out of there, because we're going to uncouple from this. Uh, no, we're going to push it back. Okay. Are we taking it all the way up there? Really? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? I don't think I did that last time I played this scenario, but it wants me to take the train up there. Okay. 
I don't understand, and it's even set the points for me. Look at that. I'm sure it didn't do this last time. Yeah, we'll do what we're told. I don't understand, but we'll do what we're told. Or did I miss a couple up? Let's just have a look. Load coal, stop, couple to formation. Oh, it doesn't think I've done that yet. Hmm. I actually think the scenario is confused. Hmm. I'm pretty sure we're not meant to move the train at this point, and we're meant to leave these here. But it really wants me to move them, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll do it. Michael, I think you've played this before. Didn't pull far enough forward. Yeah, that's possibly true. Alright. Let's just check our points to make sure we're all okay. And then we're going to take it up there, so... I'm actually going to cheat a little bit because what I want is I want these carriages far enough down here so that I can fit the caboose in and still do the run around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the train drift backwards just a little bit. Then I'm going to unhook the locomotives and go up there to obey the scenario because I don't think it'll check that I've got the train on board when I do that. So let's just set up for doing that. And I hope this doesn't end up in a runaway. Releasing the train brake, and I'm going to put my logo brake on straight away. Because as the train brake releases, we should start to roll. It's still pumping up the pipe. So we're almost up to the 90s, so the front of the train should have started releasing by now. There we go. Now I don't want to go very far. So let's, let's put on lots of brakes now, and hopefully we don't roll too far. Feels like we're stopping. Yep. Alright. So we're going to do it. Keep going with our little bit of a sneaky. We're going to, even though the scenario wants to do something different, we're not going to do it because it's silly going to let me unlock if it is. And then we're going to take the locomotives up there. Now I think I checked the points but I'm getting paranoid. And I didn't. Did it there. That one. That one. That one's right. And that one's right. Okay. Forward. We've got some amps, so off we go. Yep, we did leave it all behind and it's not rolling away, so that's good. interesting to see what the scenario does next. Those points didn't look right from the graphics, but we didn't derail, so I guess they were. Mmm, 
it did want me to bring the train up here. Let's see what it does. It's thinking. 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 Thinking some more. Now the question is, do I just roll down and go and get the train now and bring it up here because it wanted me to? Or do I just go and get the caboose? I think I've certainly managed to confuse it, that's for sure. And you know what? Ooh, it was difficult to get back into the cab. I'm just going to go and get the caboose and pretend this didn't happen. So we may not finish the scenario, but you'll see what everything happens so we're all set to go through there change that one because we want to go down and get the caboose okay into reverse and brakes off i've no idea what the game's going to do and i just keep playing but we shall see yes you're correct i've pulled a sam but not a nebworth <laughs> Let's get our speed a bit more under control. Got quite a way to go and get that caboose. Looks like it's going to still let me play, so that's good. I don't really care if I don't get the scenario points finished. It doesn't worry me at all, because we can still play and we can still run it through and do the driving part of it. That was a bit weird. That's a lot weird. not that one. It's not seven, it's not eight, it's not nine. Not that one. I should stop mucking about with buttons and put some brakes on. Or we're going to run into this caboose and knock it flying. I did find the term caboose abuse, which seemed to be a railway safety term where they don't want you to go and smack the caboose around. Clunk. All right. Now, something we have to go and do is the handbrake. 
that we put on before. Gonna do it from the ground? Nah. Some nice realism there as the brakes released on the caboose. And it slid back. I like that. Okay. Forward. Juice. And release. That way. And thanks to the people in the chat reminding me for the caboose breaks. Yes, indeed. They are now released. Chances are with two locomotives pulling it, it probably wouldn't be able to stop you. But you don't want to do things like that. So since the scenario is now broken... We'll just do this the way you'd really do it, rather than the way the game always wants you to do it. Can't set those brakes by hand because they're nearby. Or sunk brakes, set the points by hand. I going down the wrong track? Oh. <laughs> Could have sort of set those points. Go on, off you go. Go forwards. That's funny. Wrong track indeed, Michael. I'm sure I flipped him over there. Hmm. Maybe with the ultra confused scenario. It's doing weird stuff. This little scripting engine in the background's a bit sad, I guess.
This time for sure, Ali. Yay. Right track. Oops, not emergency. No, that could have gone badly. Yeah, I've got the little light on. All right. That's okay. We can go and uncouple while it does its two-minute timer. I accidentally pushed the brakes into emergency if no one noticed. If I go into forwards, oh, they have reset. Good. To get out of it, if you do put them into emergency, you push your train brake into emergency, your independent brake or your loco brake into full application and idle on the throttle and uh, neutral on the reverser. And you've got to wait for the little light to go out. And release. And you have to hold that there. I believe it's for a minute. They say on the streams it's two minutes, but I think they're just being careful. I don't think I even waited a minute then. And we're going to run around and go and get our train. Now, just before we do that, and I'm going to leave the points set the way they are, so that if we roll back when I do this, we're just going to crash into the train. Because I'm going to shut down this cab. So we go to full service on these brakes. Release the locomotive brake. Are we moving? Looks like we're going to sit still. Good. Go to off on this. Uh, headlight off. Bus light off. Number lights off. Actually, they can stay on, really. And we're going to cut out this brake stand. So I've released that one. That one's in service. Now, prototypically, it also put that to freight lap. But I have discovered that if you do that, it runs away. But let's try. Ooh, it's not going to do it. All right. Close some doors. Get out. Now, it wants you, if you play the scenario properly, to change ends at the other end. And I've had some enormous problems doing that. So I'm going to change these points now. That's interesting. Okay. And I'll just jump on the map because we need to do the ones down the other end too. And that one is fine. Alright, so let's go and get in the other loco. Now weirdly, even though it's running, you notice it's suddenly quiet. That's because the game pretends that this locomotive is not running. 
even though it quite blatantly has been. I can't remember if it actually gets louder when you do this. You have to hold this for a few seconds, and then go to run. Theory will have a working locomotive. There it goes. So it does get louder. It's interesting that that had its brakes on. Hmm. Alright, yeah, release that. Freight 2. We should. Now, yeah, hopefully, let's just do a brake test. Hopefully, this will work. It's not looking good. It is cut in, isn't it? Yep. Alright, let's stop it with this break. At least that works. There, we've got freight. Done that. I didn't tell that we were moving. Let's see if that makes a difference. Can I apply this brake now? Yeah, I can. Isn't that weird? That should make no difference whatsoever. Okay. My brakes are going to work when we couple up. I'm happy. And once again, that button obviously didn't work, because I had to use the switch on the rail driver. That's okay. You have to do a lot of problem solving in this game, because so many things are just a little bit weird. just start to get our 80 odd tons of locomotives back under control that should be far enough Sit that back there. It'll be interesting to see if the scenario figures out what's going on. Since it's still in the wait. One's not enough to keep us moving. I'm just waiting for the kathunk when we hit our carriages. Keep the speed down, it might matter. Just won't bother looking. soon. Should be about that now. Oh, look at that. All right, full service before this thing runs away. Get the train under control again. Into forwards. 
It looks like the scenario hasn't figured out what's going on because it still wants me to do all those things. That's okay. Because we're going to leave anyway. Now, before we do that, let's get set up because we're on a pretty dramatic hill. So I want to go into dynamic brakes. I want to bail off the loco. So we've only got the train brakes holding us now. And we're going to start powering the dynamics. They probably won't do anything. We shouldn't see any amps. So let's just go into four for the moment. Because that should not be enough for wheel slip. Okay, let's go into lap on that. All of our needles have stopped doing things. And release. We'll start rolling. And hopefully we'll see the dynamics start to power up. Because I'm going to need them pretty soon. Assuming the game lets the physics work since we've been naughty and disobeyed it. There we go. We are moving. And we're getting some amps on the dynamics. Yay! It's working! So let's go straight away to notch 8 on the dynamics. We're building up lots and lots and lots of amps. Speed's still creeping up, so I'm probably going to need real brakes as well. The dynamics aren't going to hold it with only two locomotives. Let's do a minimum reduction. That does seem to be holding the speed, so we're using both air and dynamics. And we are creeping up some more. I'll let it get up to 20. Is that train on this track? It is... Well, that's what happens when you don't let the scenario play out properly. And we're probably going to hit it. Um. Our speedo just went to zero. What does that mean? But we're not stopping. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to try something really silly. So we should now have brakes on that front locomotive. Because I assume it's still sitting there. So the scenario got really confused. So let's just take our dynamics off. We're going to shut down this cab. And hopefully it won't roll away. And we're going to go and do something monumentally strange. Because we're going to go and take over that first one that's on the front of these carriages. We'll leave all this running because we'll just give the game the benefit of the doubt. I think that's rolling, isn't it? Oh no, it stopped. Okay, so we cut out the brake. Actually, that should have been... I meant to put it in full service and then cut it out. Alright, now... Headlight off. We're going to go steal a train. What you do when scenarios break, break them back. This should be really interesting. I wonder if we'll even get away with this. So the locomotive that took these cars was meant to push it back up to the other track ages ago, but for whatever reason did not. Gonna do the whole thing backwards too.
Sorry, lady. Oh, I'm not allowed to sit in this seat. Can I do anything with it? So does it... No, it doesn't obey the rail driver, but I can still do stuff. Can I get to the throttle? Can I go backwards. Release. Release. Okay, oops. Now we've got to go through that sequence. Work over this lady's shoulder here. I would have punched me by now. Now, let's see if that's enough. Let's go into forwards and the lights come on, so we're going to have to wait the full minute. Yeah, I broke it. Great. <laughs> I'll have to watch the video back because I mustn't have followed the direction somewhere. Can we go into forwards now? No. Not enough time. Be patient. So brake stand even cut in. Yep. Is that enough time? Wait for a minute and see if we get away with this. Otherwise, the stream will probably end at this point. <laughs> I wanted you to see the crazy run down the hill, because when you take off, it gets very crazy very fast. How about now? really invading this poor person's space here. Now? No. I'm sure it's been more than a minute, though. Ah, let's just try and release it and see what it does. Yeah, it's releasing. Get that into braking because we're going to need it when the train releases. Is it going to be able to move though? Because it's not. That could just be the compressors pumping it. No way the train brake on one locomotive held that. Okay, let's get some dynamics going. Sounds like it's getting amps, but I don't see a needle. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, it's working. Aha, we've stolen a train. So now that I've combined them, are you going to let me sit in this seat? No. Oh, I can't use the camera keys because I'm not actually in a locomotive, am I? I'm just a passenger now. Hey lady, your train's running away. Look, it's doing 50 mile an hour. Well, it will be.
They're on 50. Oops. Damn it. Speed is coming down. It's funny that you're not allowed to sit in a chair, but you can still manipulate the handles. It's definitely all coming with us. Oh, now this one's speed's gone to zero, so the AI's confused. It's applied all the brakes. Let's see if we can get it to go again. Over here and see if it. Oh no, the PCS lights on. So she doesn't know how to reset that, does she? Oh, now wait, let me con oh, no, control that. That's interesting. So it's in full emergency braking. The PCS is open, so there should be no air in the brake pipe, so it shouldn't be able to move. Hmm. All right, then. We're still stealing a train. Come back over here so I can get to the throttle. There you go. Now I'm controlling it through her head. Get some more dynamics going. Successful thievery. Yeah, there's a there's a conductor as well. We should be getting to the uphill bit fairly soon. Amazing the dynamics of one locomotive are managing to hold at this speed, this train. Let's give it three. It can't talk to the other ones, but you never know. The inside of her ear. Ha, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Explain that one, Dovetail. Might want to slow down just a little. Can AIs derail? There's an interesting question. So even though the PCS is still open, it's still quite happily actually working. 50 miles an hour. We're officially a runaway now. We should pick up these carriages too, just for the fun of it. So, this amuses me. So with this valve open, with the light on here, it's not supposed to be controlling the train's brake pipe. It obviously is, because we're slowing down. And applying the brakes on the locomotive would not do that. Although I'm sure the physics is remarkably confused at the moment.
and I can't use any of my camera keys. I could probably jump out. Yeah, I can get out still. What would they do if I just left him to it? I could use the map. This we're nearing the uphill bit. There's a red signal up there, we won't get past that. But that's where the scenario is meant to stop anyway. Oh, I reckon we just play this out. Dynamics are managing to control our speed fairly well now. I'm waiting to see the speed start to drop because then I'll know we're in the uphill bit. And then we can start powering. Feels like we're going slower, but the speedo doesn't say we are. It still's got 10 mile an hour. And you can see the rail driver speedo's got nothing, so the game is quite confused at this point. Sorry I can't give you any outside camera views, but you can only use camera keys when you're actually in a locomotive. Alright, the speed's starting to drop a little now. Down to 9. So I reckon we can probably that go all the way to idle. It did. Let's go into powering. Just let that sit for a bit so I don't blow it up. Back around this side so I can get to the throttle. Through her head again probably. There we go. Not making any amps yet. Hmm, I actually think... I'm surprised something really bad didn't happen then, because... Should be in reverse. Now let's see if we make some amps. We are making amps, yes. Train successfully stolen. We are in control. Now, since the AIs have magic physics, this um, one locomotive can probably pull this train and it's, up, it's two dead now, now dead locomotives up the hill. That's cool.
Oh, and the PCS has reset itself too. That's interesting. That's not meant to happen. Come here often. Wasn't it a girl before? I'm sure it was. All right. Actually, that's my conductor, so he must have followed me. That's interesting. I'm sure when we looked in this locomotive as we passed the siding, there were two female characters in the seats. We're starting to slow down. Let's give it some more. Speed's still scraping down, so we're definitely in the uphill part. Can one locomotive with its AI physics get the train up the hill? Well, we've stopped losing speed at least. We're almost at the point where the scenario ends because it actually ends at those that red signal there. So I think I should probably take the power off and apply some brakes. Otherwise, we're going to run through this red signal. In fact, we may still do it. I think we're going to. Let's go to emergency. Oh. <laughs> well, that was fun. So, just to recap, we did manage to load everything. We did follow all the instructions, I think, although I'm going to watch it back and just see, because maybe I did do something wrong. And then something weird happened. And then something weirder happened. And then something really weird happened. And then we stole a train. That's all good. Anyway, I think I will end the stream there. So that was uh, a lot of fun. So thanks for coming along. If you enjoyed it and you have not already, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you think it was fun. And uh, I'll be back next week, 8.30 a.m. on Sunday, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So thanks a lot for joining in and uh, see you next week, I hope.